Hello, guten Morgen, guten Tag. This is going to be my German gas mask collection. Now, before I start this video, obviously, I'll be covering some of the Nazi German gas masks from the World War II time period. Then I'll be looking at some West German gas masks I own. The thing of this, I don't have any prior to World War II gas masks that are German. And although I've got lots of East German stuff, I don't actually have any genuine East German gas masks. The reason being that uh, East Germany mostly actually imported masks. So while I do have some gas masks that I could technically class as East German, because they're in East German carry satchels, maybe with some German stamps in them, I'm not going to do that simply because I know they were manufactured outside of East Germany and just imported. Um, East Germany, as far as I'm aware, did actually do some industrial gas masks themselves and built those, but not military ones, I don't have any of them. So let's start off with the Vox Mask 37, or Vox Gas Mask 37 comes in this sort of shoebox thing and this was a German civilian respirator during World War II so let me get all this open here is the filter and as you can see the Schwastika Reich Eagle stamp is still visible at the bottom so yes these uh, shower head kind of filters do contain asbestos as far as I'm aware but I'm not going to exactly breathe for a filter from 1938 so it's essentially a 40 millimeter filter because Germany was way ahead of the time in terms of 40 millimeter filters the issue was that they didn't kind of really capitalize on it being a good idea so much um, it's kind of hard to explain I've gone into this before but Germany during World War II and even during, during, during World War One, in a sense, they actually realised that you could make sort of screw-on filters for masks, um, but they didn't really capitalise on it. It's hard to kind of explain that, but what I'm sort of trying to get at is that other nations kind of used the big hose and filter unit combinations and then went to these filters. Germany was always using this filter, but they kind of filter idea, but they never really grasped how good an idea it was and you could make lightweight modular masks. So the German masks kind of have some good points that are well ahead of their time but also they're not really realised so anyway here's the giant Volks gas mask filter as far as I'm aware every generation of Volks gas mask had one of these uh, so big filter there and then you get the mask out of the box we have the actual whoop, there goes a bit of cardboard from it the actual Volks gas mask 37 helmet style design mask. Now the Volks gas masks go down in quality as time goes on, the reason is Germany was running out of rubber so um, the earlier ones had the most rubber used in their construction and therefore technically the best the later they went on the worse they got. So taken out of there it's helmet style mask design as you can see a lot of people be like oh that looks like a GP5 it's actually just this is a helmet style mask. There's some very small writing around the um, eyepieces there and you've got your stamp on it there if that's visible on the camera right I'm not going to breathe for it but I'm going to just very briefly try this on because I've never done that before yeah it's not exactly my size I'd say right, get that off the reason I'm not too eager to um, do much of this is if you look inside there you might be able to see there's that fibery stuff at the bottom and that does look like asbestos weave that looks a lot and feels a lot like asbestos weave and um, on my Volksmask 40 which I'll show you in a minute that stuff is actually properly deteriorating and goes airborne so I think they may have put some asbestos insulation inside the actual mask not as a filter material but just kind of there for whatever reason but yeah the Volks gas mask now there's another Reich stamp there Volks gas mask 37 was definitely one of the highest quality civilian respirators of the second world war it's the famous helmet style design that you all know from the GP5 um, again a very good design the issue being logistically it was too expensive to make so then Germany actually had to start cutting back on quality as the war goes on and then we'll get to the Volks Gas Mask 40 that I'll show you now. Okay, now for my Volks Gas Mask 40. Uh, interesting line, that says 39.86 at the mo uh, bottom, but this is definitely the 40. Right, so let's get this open. So again, you have a very similar package inside. I'm not going to bother taking this all out to show you completely. 
uh, you can see your Reich Eagle stamp still there on that. Everything's exactly the same inside of the instructions and everything else buried underneath. But you'll notice this one, far less rubber and straps. The reason being that Germany basically said, if you don't have the rubber to keep making these masks, so they um, went to straps. Obviously, that was something they really should have done earlier on. Um, one of the interesting things, if you obviously read up on the history of Nazi Germany, you'll become very quickly aware that they had absolutely no idea what they were doing in terms of logistics. For the most part, Nazi Germany had very, very good equipment, but they had no clue with logistics. And that's partially because you had the higher up people in the Nazi party who were quite frankly idiots, um, you know, actually in charge of trying to talk down to the generals and people who actually knew what they were doing. No, we will do it this way, this is the right way to do it, we will put the rubber on the masks we cannot afford. You know, it's um, not a... Uh, not a good way of doing it. It's like, you know, I keep always bringing us up with the German logistics, but it's like the mass production of the super heavy tanks, like the Tigers and the King Tigers. Originally, um, what was advised to the German High Command was to have basically something slightly better than the Panzer IV, but a cheap mass producible German tank that would still have quite decent quality, but, you know, just a good advanced medium tank. What ended up happening is Hitler kept demanding stuff got bigger and bigger and bigger. The Panther kept getting more and more bulky with a bigger gun on it. Um, and eventually you had all these tanks that were very, very impressive when they worked, but they constantly broke down, consumed too much fuel, and Germany couldn't afford the fuel for them. And then you have basically, uh, you know, the collapse in many ways of the Third Reich due to logistic um, sort of stupidity. No understanding of how to get stuff from somewhere to somewhere else or the you know proper allocation of resources. Now, interesting enough, they did make in the end, uh, when obviously too little too late, a Vox Mask 44, which I do not own. The Vox Gas Mask 44 is basically where they've got a sack, put two eyepieces in it and attached a filter intake and outtake to it. Uh, you can find pictures of it online, I assume it originally had some sort of primitive rubber coating or something to make it airtight. But it, they basically went from having the best possible mask out of all of them to the worst, where they were, you know, in logistical trouble trying to design these things. Here you go, there is the Volx Gas Mask 40. Uh, they're cheapening the Volx Gas Mask 37 design, but it's not got to as cheap as it can get yet. Alright, here's my only military German mask from the Second World War. This is the GM38, or M1938. This particular one was made by BMW, as you can see on there. So, the GM38 is one of those masks, as I was saying, that's kind of good for its time and kind of not. It has a really bad strap system. The idea of this mask is that you stretch it over your face like that, you've got a chin rest there, then you kind of do the straps up to hold it tight to the face. The problem with these is they don't make good airtight seals even when they're new. Um, you can tell this because there's a couple of masks that are much newer than this that use the same design that are really bad at making face seals like the Hungarian M76. But yeah, that's it. Made by BMW. Actually quite good rubber on this mask. Um, the weird thing of Germany was the uh, M1930 gas mask, or just GM30, was the one that didn't use much rubber. It was basically a material coated in rubber. And then they designed the M1938 or GM38 to be an entirely proper rubber face mask. Obviously, with gas masks making the entire face of the respirator out of rubber is a good idea. Intake valve there, XL valve there, it's the same dimension as the civilian Volx gas mask, so the filters from that would fit on it. I think this is a primitive form of 40mm filter. But, yeah. The Volx gas mask, uh, sorry, the uh, actual GM38 is a good mask, apart from the strap system. But, yeah, it's a good mask, but... Again, logistically, Germany was in rubber problems by this point, they design a good rubber mask, but then, you know, it's kind of inaffordable for them to mass produce it. So quite a lot of these were made, not as many as the GM30s, but I don't have a GM30 as far as I'm aware, we'll get to that in a moment. So yeah, this is sort of a good mask, in a way, as I was saying. It's modern with its filter intake and outtake, but the strap system's stupid, and Germany really couldn't afford to make them when they started making these. So, there you go, that's my GM38. Uh, people have asked me before, do I have a right eagle stamp on this one? No, it seems to have long since worn off. I'm not sure exactly where it would have been on the mask. But because all the rubber and metal is stamped, um, 1942 I think I said? Yeah, 42. 
with the BMW stamp. This is definitely a World War II mask. It's just, you know, due to age and it kind of crumpling in on itself. I don't think you're going to see that Reich Eagle stamp anymore on it. But yeah, that's the GM38. Sort of good, sort of bad. Um, now, we're kind of done with World War II Germany now, so let's start looking at some West German stuff. Okay, now what I believe to be a GM54, but I can't be certain. This does up with a metal kind of clasp on the tin. You pull it down, it's spring assisted, the lid comes off. Storage space in the lid there. And you saw this mummified mask the other day, but here it is again. It is what I believe to be a GM54, which, let's see if I can stretch it out again without the entire mask collapsing in on itself. This is basically, as far as I'm aware, where West Germany said they wanted to make a mask to basically... They didn't want to, as far as I'm aware, it's like they didn't want to um, try and design a new mask or couldn't afford to design a new mask, I guess they're busy paying war reparations or something. So, but they wanted a new gas mask. So what they basically did is they said, oh, there's a GM30, if you have that design laying around, let us make more of those. So basically this is just a post-war GM30 from all the information I can get on GM54. I think the exhale valve and intake valve is slightly different. You'll notice this one's actually missing its seal in there. You can see right through the mask. But for all sakes and purposes, these are basically just GM30s. Um, just GM30s made sort of a decade or so after they were originally made. You know, decade or 20 years, two decades. Um, not loads to say about it. This one's mummified and horrible. The most interesting of the um, West German masks, I'd say, from this time period where they just remade World War II masks, is I think it's called the Z56. And I believe it was called something like the Civil Protection Mask 56 or something like that. But it's a white mask and it's basically the GM38 design but just made entirely out of white rubber and it looks quite creepy. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's just entirely made for civil defence. Now, an interesting thing, I don't have any in my collection, but Draeger made a load of either industrial or maybe military concept masks that nobody bought that they exported to Israel and that's where the Shalon 4A1 comes in. Now I haven't got a German one to show you so I won't show you one but basically as far as I'm aware it's called the Draeger Simplex and it was a mask that I guess they sold on export and then when Israel you know actually bought a license for them or didn't buy a license for them and made their own it became the 4A1 that is famous today but from what I understand the Draeger Simplex is very kind of basic and simple compared to what the 4A1 turned into be to become a very good mask but with the GM38 kind of design you can see aspects of the um, 4A1 there uh, but as I said I don't have any Draeger Simplexes or any of the other cool Draeger masks they made but I do have obviously some quite famous ones now now, a mask you might think you're familiar with until you look closer, because I didn't realise until somebody pointed this out to me in the comments. This is a Draeger M62, I believe. Now, you can see it actually says Draeger in there if the lighting's good enough. Now, this is kind of like the prototype M65. They made the M62 first, and then the M65 came later. Uh, apparently, one of the differences is this has a single metal thing going across, not a crisscrossed one. Apparently the exhale valve is slightly different. I think this is the one you can't take off, whereas on the M65 you can take it off. Looking at the inner mast, there's quite a bit of dry rot in there, because this was a damaged strap, so it's got it very cheaply at one point. Um, looking at this, as well as the spider's webs inside, the actual kind of cheek bit, uh, sorry, chin bit's different. And I believe there's a couple of little differences on the inside as well. If it had straps on, I could check if the straps are the same or not, but regardless, this was, as far as I'm aware, like the prototype M65, they made the M62 first, then within a couple of years they started mass producing the M65. Big thank you for whoever it was like a year ago who said to me in one of my comments, oh that M65 you've got isn't actually an M65, it's an M62 because of these reasons. Uh, thank you for that, but yeah. Now let's me, let me try and dig out my M65 and we can look at the more famous one of the German masks. And now for the Draeger M65 that I'm sure a lot of you know because it's in some ways a very good mask and in other ways a poorly designed mask. <laughs> so um, let's get over the reasons for that. So as you can see if you look at this you will notice if the lighting allows it that there's actually a proper chin rest inside this one unlike my M62. And this has got a five point rubber head harness and it's also got the thing around the neck which is really handy for um, keeping it hanging around like that. But yeah. 
it's got the plasticky XL cover that moves. Now I'm sure there's a way of pulling that off, but I'm not going to bother now. But it's got the crisscrossed thing there that's smaller and it doesn't say Drega on it. So the problem with this mask, as I have explained before, is that it's got a peripheral seal, just not a very good one. So what happens for loads of people, um, and I've spoken to you know, like I think dozens of people in the YouTube comments by this point who have the same issue of these masks, you put the mask on, you tighten it up, it should fit your face, but air seeps through because the mask doesn't quite fit your face. And I've had people say, no, it's because these masks are old and they're not flexible anymore. No, mine's pretty flexible, it's not that. And it's a problem with Draeger M65 clone masks as well, where other countries have direct, done direct copies, they all have this kind of same issue. So let me see if I can get this mask on. Right, so you see, this seems like I have a good seal on it, but when I try to breathe in, I can hear air leaking into the mask. Now, I know from a fact, if I tighten the straps to be absurdly tight, so much that it hurts me to wear the mask, then the mask does become airtight. But, unfortunately, I don't have the correct face shape for the mask, even though otherwise it is a good fit. So, we can come to the conclusion that the Draeger M65 would have been a great mask if they'd have only um, done a better peripheral seal job on it. So, yeah, this is a peripheral seal. It looks all fine until you actually wear it, and then for whatever reason, it's not that great. As I said, this isn't exclusive to the M65. This is an issue that lots of masks have. But the interesting thing is lots of Draeger M65 clones actually have that problem. Um, I should note, I don't think this is a voice diaphragm. I think this is just literally an exhale valve under this plastic cover. Um, it's kind of hard to see in there. It's definitely, yeah, I think it's just a regular exhale valve. But, um, yeah, the M65 is one of those masks where everything feels like it's really good quality. Draeger is definitely a very good designer of gas masks. Draeger have been designing gas masks and other respiratory equipment for ages. I assume it's Draeger that makes the M2000 as well, which is the mask that replaced this one. Sadly, I don't have one of those, so I can't show it you. People keep saying, can you get an M2000? Can you get an M2000? Sadly not, because you see, I don't have all this money where I can just simply say, oh look, a £100 gas mask, yeah, I'll order one of those. Now and again, I do see them turn up on eBay in the UK, but they are normally £100 or more. I really can't justify spending that on masks. Um, unless it was something I really, really wanted, I guess, and would actually use it as a survival thing. Um, that, that same thing applies to literally any mask. Lots of people keep saying, do you have this mask? What you need to do is search on my channel, is there videos that mask there? If there's videos there, I obviously have the mask, and you can watch the videos I've already made on them. If I don't have the mask, if it's an expensive one, the reason I don't own it is because I can't afford it, or I simply can't find any for sale. Um, so there we go, that is the Draeger M65. In some ways, this is a very good mask, don't get me wrong. The issue with it being that, um, as said, it's very hard with these to get a proper face seal. Even if your face isn't too dissimilar to the shape of the mask, it seems that unless you get one that's exactly your size, and then tighten it so much it's crushing, crushing your skull, uh, you won't get, ever get a good airtight seal with these. So, partly the fault of the mask for not having a better peripheral seal, but this it's not exclusive to the M65. And I do like this mask, even though it doesn't fit me properly. I think it does look very cool. And the quality of the parts is very good, very German, but... There you go. So that's my German gas mask collection for anybody interested. Um, as said, it's actually kind of like free Nazi masks and then free um, post-Nazi masks, really. So, so yeah, six masks in total. Um, but yeah, that's my German gas mask collection. As said, sadly, I don't have a GM or M2000 and I don't have any of the East German industrial masks they made for those because they actually look quite interesting like the East German Acme kind of rip-off masks but yeah that is my German collection I hope you've enjoyed it I hope I've not offended the Germans too much by doing the Nazi voice but that was for the Nazi masks and I'm sure everybody doesn't like the Nazis so it's okay to make fun of them um, but yeah that's my German gas mask collection I hope you enjoyed the video